Welcome to Blockchain Recorded, the podcast for the tech curious, where we talk about anything and everything related to the exponentially evolving crypto, blockchain, and Web 3.0 space. Our mission is simple, to share knowledge, facilitate discourse, and help evolve education in blockchain fundamentals, decentralization solutions, and relevant use cases for today's digital economy. We at Blockchain Recorded are not registered investment advisors and do not deal with financial or trading token elements, nor offer any licensed financial services. The content of this podcast is for informational and educational purposes only, while the opinions of all parties involved are their own. I'm your host, Nina Tserar, and now let's talk blockchain. Before I introduce our guest today, I'd like to remind our listeners to follow us on Twitter, where we pre-stream each episode on Twitter Spaces the day before publishing on all major podcast platforms. For the platform list, visit our website, blockchainrecorded.com. In addition, Blockchain Recorded Podcast is a proud media partner of the upcoming Blockdown Portugal and Istanbul Blockchain Week events. For further event information, speakers, and ticket details with available discounts, check blockdownconf.com and istanbulblockchainweek.com. This episode is dedicated to the Web3 Stronger Together ecosystem initiative and its first virtual summit, which took place between March 1st and March 4th, 2023 in Evelyn's Metaverse, a virtual platform uniting several hundred Web3 leaders and thinkers, over 100 projects and speakers, and over 5,000 attendees from across the world. The purpose of Web3 Stronger Together, with which Blockchain Recorded is a proud media partner, is to demonstrate to the crypto community that the Web3 ecosystem is strong, solidary, active, and committed to furthering innovation, despite the status of the market and nature of price speculations. It emphasizes the importance of fairness, inclusivity, diversity, and sustainability to furthering healthy Web3 fundamentals. The summit included many panel discussions with assigned topics, which Blockchain Recorded is redistributing in audio form. The ninth panel discussion on March 1st talks about the intersection of gaming with social impact, namely how Gamify and Web3 enable meaningful change. The speakers were Sherelle Francis, founder and owner of iLeap Group, Carol Stromboni, NFT Wagme podcast co-host, writer and consultant, George Levy, former CEO of Blockchain Institute of Technology, currently CEO of AI Institute of Technology, and Frederic Ramey, co-founder of Scubaverse. The speakers explore Gamify with respect to social impact by first delineating the need for basic infrastructure or access and affordability, as well as education and the need for a holistic discussion about equity versus elitist monetization. The following is the panel's discussion hosted by Laurent Perello, the leader behind the Web3 Stronger Together ecosystem initiative. We do apologize for potential audio drops due to choppy internet connections. We edited the recording to the best of our ability. I'm really glad to uh, welcome our speakers, Frédéric, Shirel, George and uh, Carol. We will talk about the uh, intersection of gaming and social impact, how GameFi and Web3 enable be mindful change. But first of all, guys, I want to uh, let you each one introduce yourself quickly, explaining what you are doing. And uh, most uh, importantly, why are you involved in uh, in Web3? So let's uh, start with uh, Frédéric. Welcome and thank you thank for you. joining. Thank you, Laura. Thank you so much for having me on board. My name is uh, Frédéric uh, Ramé. I'm a chief, di chief digital officer and advisor for Web3 Startups. I've been working for the last 20 years in uh, digital production, so uh, digital marketing for major brands and a web agency, um, okay, building uh, hundreds of uh, Web2 projects, running a mobile game studio and doing some uh, free-to-play titles, and lately working on the digital transformation of uh, Barrier Group, which is a land-based casino group and work on uh, online casino for Switzerland and uh, online sport betting in France. But now I'm fully web-free and I work with web-free startups and helps brands to uh, build their metaverse strategy. So I just try to simply share my understanding of digital technologies and the web-free ecosystem. I did a lot of digital marketing, games, and gambling. So exploring game pie is a real treasure. <laughs> I have a lot of curiosity for, for that. And um, today, uh, as a co-founder of uh, the Scubaverse, I'm working on innovative model of game pie for impact. Well, uh, Thanks to you, Frédéric, and welcome again. 
Shirel, welcome. Well, thank you. Uh, good day, I will say, considering all the time zones that are here. I am Sherelle Francis. I'm founder and owner of the iLeap Group, and we are named for those who are willing to take an innovative jump. We focus on supporting minority-serving institutes at large in higher education that serve primarily the underserved. And I'm here, um, I sit on the eSports uh, Board and uh, School of Business at Morris Brown. Um, but particularly, I am interested in making sure that those who are underserved in the demographic that are often overlooked are focused on and are not forgotten. They are a great part of the contribution and population that we are looking at. And when it comes to the gaming industry, we particularly focus on the curriculum and the business fact and how we are mesmerized that when these two worlds come together, we see our students grow exponentially. And we want to make sure that they are a part of closing the digital divide. I often say demolishing the digital divide. You know, we find that they have so much to contribute. So this conversation um, really excites me. And growing up in a home with 12 boys, being the homely girl for 14 years, I was surrounded by Atari, Nintendo, and many other games. And so um, I find it all really um, exciting and where we're going um, with it. I think it's a wonderful challenge. And so I'm glad to be here, a part of the panel, and contribute and learn more importantly. So thank you for having me. Thanks to you. Jean, welcome. Thank you very much. I'm George Levy. I'm the CEO of Blockchain Institute of Technology. We're the world standard for blockchain education and certification. We have about 170 something thousand students worldwide. And the reason why this is so important to me is that what we focus on is bringing education and ensuring that people have access to this. We have to democratize this opportunity because otherwise centralized entities have control. And the point is that people learn how to be able to leverage blockchain technology, leverage all the decentralization opportunities we have with blockchain that brings opportunities to the masses. And that's what I would be able to be to bring to, to bring to the world this opportunity. So thank you so much for letting me be here. Thanks to you. And Carol, welcome. Welcome. Hi, everybody. I'm Carol. Um, yeah, good morning, because I'm in Hawaii right now, so it's the morning. Uh, I'm passionate about uh, NFTs and crypto and gaming. Like Shirelle, I, gr I grew up uh, like playing video games, mostly with my brother. And I invested in many NFTs and crypto, crypto and, and tokens like uh, Gods and Chain, Defi Kingdom when it was hyped last year, or Coin, stuff like that. And um, and also I host I co-host a podcast in French on NFTs, uh, so I'm very passionate about all of this. And I work in innovation. I wrote a book on innovation last year, and um, I'm really passionate about new tech and and Web three. Welcome again, and thanks to all to take part of this uh, experience and uh, this journey. So let's dive in the today uh, discussion, intersection of gaming and uh, social impact, how GameFi and Web3 enable uh, meaningful change. I'm personally uh, engaged in doing what I do to, to bring a sustainable alternative to, to the current uh, system. I'm not the one who want to disrupt and uh, erase everything. I think it will be a kind of coexistence and uh, bringing not only uh, innovation, but also a sustainable and long term oriented use case and also trying to create a space where new people could join feeling safe and in a welcoming uh, place. So what is your point of view regarding uh, we talk about GameFi, gaming, web-free gaming, uh, social fi. How do you see this project, this innovation, bringing real and uh, concretely change for each one, everyone, and not only in uh, privileged countries, but everywhere? Who want to start? Josh? Yeah, I actually, um, I'm just going to narrow down. I think there's six key areas that I specifically think of when I when I do the cross between gaming finance and uh, Web3. I think there's six specific areas I focus on. Number one is financial inclusion, letting people that don't have access to bank accounts, being able to participate and actually be able to earn from their contributions. The second one is democratizing gaming because the gaming platforms are controlled by centralized entities. It's, it's the, uh, the activisions of the world. The big companies are so... With Web3 and GameFi, we actually are able to democratize. More people can participate. The third one is transparency and trust. Blockchain enables you to have a single source of truth, be able to verify for yourself. The fourth one is incentivizing positive behaviors. You can actually incentivize people to do things that you want them to do. 
The fifth one is actually being able to fund social causes. And the last one is, as I mentioned, decentralization, bringing the opportunity to, to everybody, not just the centralized entities. Those are my six key areas I would focus on. Thank you. Thank you, Jordan. But how can we bring this concretely? What can we do and what should we do? We see a lot of, uh, you know, short-term oriented people here, scam, people who just want to take profit and guided by uh, hyper speculation. What should we be focused on to really talk about uh, change in our society? Shira, what is your point of view? So for me, especially from an education perspective, I'm always thinking about access. One, one of the things I'm always thinking about, broadband. When we consider that 40% of homes were exacerbated out in the inner city and rural serving by the pandemic globally, right? One in every four students um, had an issue with accessing learning. And then we just think about game five, we talk about democratization. I always go back to the infrastructure. How many of these young people, are our future generation, would not have access to the opportunity to participate? So for me, it is the upskilling and it is the access. I think that if they have access to the opportunity to participate, then we have true democratization. So my first question will always be, is the infrastructure there for them to participate? Are they able to have opportunities to schools, to the upskilling, to the education, to cybersecurity readiness? Because for every opportunity to participate in um, financial security and I would say independence, right? Then they also need to know how to be secure. One of the things with the population that I so often work with is that the influence, democratization, having this independence requires you to be very aware in the information that they're being fed. This gives them a whole opportunity to now explore. But for me, it comes down to access because they have this creative mind. So now they have a breadth of information. And one of the things with Game 5, we still have social influence, right? And so now we're breaking that up. So what are we breaking it up for and do they have access to it? So making sure we're providing opportunity to infrastructure, access and affordability, and more importantly, security. So I always say it's the ABCs of what Ivy Group does. Access, broadband, cybersecurity, and cloud platform, or everything else is for naught. Thank you, Shino. Carol, what is your point of view? You, you are mute, apparently. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes. Can you just repeat the question so I can get back to it, please? Yeah. How can GameFi and, and, and Web3 can really bring a, a real change? And uh, how can we see this, uh, which use case? What do we miss? What do we need to really be able to talk about changing uh, life and bringing uh, new opportunities to people through GameFi? Yeah, so thank you. Thank you, Laurent. Uh, yeah, I think it's like mostly a question of education because GameFi is not uh, very easy to understand. It's uh, uh, driven by greed, like everything in crypto and NFTs. I was looking at the numbers on some GameFi, you know, XC Infinity. Uh, the token was is like so low today. It's 10, it reached 74 last year. The Fi Kingdom that was really big on the Harmony Harmony blockchain is 0.2. It used to be, uh, it reached $11. I know because I was there and I didn't sell when it was high because I was like, it's going to go higher. Even though I know better and I've been in crypto since 2017. Uh, same for Gods and Chain, same for many, many, many game fi, game fee that are based on, on tokens and on the idea that you can accumulate tokens by either stacking or doing things on, on the platform and then thinking that you're going to make money from it because of course some games some games are educational but most of the games are based on getting richer so for me like first of all it would be like education like educating people and how it works that's very fluctuant it's not like something that i mean the technology by itself web3 is very it's very it's amazing it can be very good for everyone but the use today it's very dangerous in my mind so so first of all, I would say educate, educate, educate about how it works and uh, how fast it can switch from one to another. Thank you. I used to say, uh, and I, I repeat it uh, constantly, 
that we should maybe hold on innovating in the technical point of view and start rethinking the why purpose of what we are doing and yes. having a, a really long-term vision. If we bring the same uh, behavior or the same business approach uh, that we see outside in Web3, we all know how it will end and it's uh, useless. Frédéric, what is your point of view? Obviously, education is uh, the basis, as uh, the first layer on which we should build uh, wh whatever our action are. W once we said that, it's may sometimes it's quite difficult, you know, because uh, even if you are educated and you know a lot about Web3 and you've seen a lot of pro product, it's quite hard from to just uh, dive in into, into the tokenomics and uh, identify that what can be the failure. And then even if you have done this, you're still, uh, yeah, you've got this uh, little greedy, <laughs> greedy buddy on your, on your shoulder saying, okay. And so, yeah, education, but uh, I think we, we need uh, what kind of thing you are doing today just to gather the good with and to have this uh, community of people who are helping each other. I found a lot of help in Telegram rooms with people just explaining how it works, what are the project, and just together. Uh, we were much stronger. We had shape to understand project and okay to yeah take care. So this is on the individual side. But Game Five is still at the early age. We are experimenting. People are some some people are scammers. Okay, so they are doing work pools. But there may be other project where people are have not bad behaviors, but they do not control enough uh, what they are doing uh, about security about tokenomics. So I guess there's also something to do there to support them and provide guidelines and guidance to help them to achieve what is the best for the people. And maybe as the last point, uh, regarding my previous uh, background with uh, free to play and uh, gambling, okay, this has nothing to do with uh, web free. There's no uh, crypto scam there, but okay, free to play is using uh, cognitive barriers to let's say, take benefit of the behavior of the people. And uh, w when you're running a gambling house, okay, you're just managing the, the thin line between, okay, uh, gaming behavior and addiction. Okay, so even in the, not in other uh, domain than game, game fi, the professional uh, need to have, uh, to keep in mind that they are um, offering service to people and they just have, things right to do and you shouldn't have to uh, yeah provoke bad behaviors thank you uh, Shirel, what kind of uh, change would you like to see emerging uh, from uh, web free and game fi or gaming uh, web free gaming uh, industry so for me one of the, the pieces i was really thinking about yesterday too infrastructure i i believe it's chain if i'm if i'm not mistaken with Mistin Labs, yes, Chang in Mistin Labs, and he's he's going through redeveloping his infrastructure as they're rebuilding, right? And so, I would like to see in Web three the discussion of equality and equity, and how we are looking at safety. And when we talk about finance, a lot of the social fi and game fi is really about the influencer and monetizing and this kind of conversation and the token but how are we looking at how it's going to be for better and not from a position of cliche because i think a lot of the talk has been cliche right i i live i'm going to say something that's probably a little not happily taken i live in south florida now i live 30 minutes or so from miami right i am in nft web 3 i am in like the epis if we will and so I would like to see a conversation that's more holistic about what really better looks like for most and all, not for just a group. And sometimes I feel the conversation begins to lean towards better for the digital elitists. So I would like to see it as a very equitable and liberated conversation because the truth for me is one out of four students don't have access. So what does it look like when we're talking about open market, when we're talking about finance, we're talking about gaming? Um, I like to see as a more equitable conversation than a little more elite conversation. I think Web3 
has the opportunity to open that conversation and challenge. And that's what Wing is trying to do, right? He's looking at his developers and saying, what did we miss in the infrastructure and in web two, right? So what, what can we do now? How can we open this up? So I would like to see that conversation broader. Yeah, it's also uh, one of our goal uh, to try to also start to have uh, engage discussion, really uh, focus on, I say it again, each one and everyone. Uh, I went a few times uh, last year, uh, since 20 years now, 25, I forget how old I am time to time as a volunteer in Africa, in several countries, and there is a, a reality far away from the web free reality. And if we don't consider all these people, all, all these humans, we, we miss the point. Uh, we will just reproduce what we have seen in Web 2, in Web 1, and in previous innovation cycle. And for me, it's really important when people ask me, what are, you, are we missing to see a mass adoption? I say, maybe some philosopher. Got it. We have a lot, we have a lot of great technical guys, developer, they are able to innovate, create some really crazy stuff, time to time uh, hyper complicated in my point of view. We should also time to time think about innovating, but simplifying things. But we miss long term vision. George, how do you engage people to escape this, uh, you know, and it's I, I was uh, <laughs> laughing because most of us have uh, time to time have been a bit greedy. You know, it's when you, we are in a bull market, it's it's so crazy to see that uh, your wallets, the, the value of your wallets is, you know, you, you you go to sleep, you you wake up, you have a look, oh, I could go back to sleep, but it's so easy. And then you face the reality, you, you, you lost much more money. How can we also uh, concretely educate people to escape this uh, primarily, uh, you know, attraction, uh, I mean, earning easy, easy money. What can we do concretely? Excellent. Well, uh, key things. So I wanted to point out, first off, Sherelle, I'm also from South Florida, but I'm currently in, in Mexico. So when we say we're changing the world, and I want to say it from the sample, because what you bring up, like the global opportunity, right? So we have students in more than 190 countries, but I've taught physically in Barbados. I've taught in Curacao. I've taught in Brazil. I've taught in Argentina. And then sometimes I'm teaching in English, sometimes I'm teaching in Spanish, sometimes somebody teaches in Portuguese. But the key point is the opportunity is global. And the point is just having access. Right now I'm in Merida in Mexico. And because of the fact that I have access to technology, it could be the same George Levy that could be in Miami. Or we could be in the metaverse. And in the metaverse, I could be in Barbados or I could be anywhere in the world. So the opportunity is global only to the people that actually have the knowledge and uh, being able the opportunity to understand how it works and participate. So I don't want to take too much of the time, but I will say is this, the beauty of this opportunity in time is uh, just putting back in mind, I'm going to date myself. I was a co-founder of an internet startup in 1998. We raised $147 million and from a team of five, we did this huge thing. But back then we needed all these servers. We had to get the money because we needed servers. We needed people. That, it was just terrible to be able to do that. Nowadays, I could actually do the whole thing using smart contracts and actually program everything, adapt from Medina or wherever in the world. The opportunity truly can be global. And this Web3 opportunity can come true if enough of us actually join together. That's why I love your mission of Web3 Stronger Together. We have to make sure that everybody has access to this opportunity because it truly is a global opportunity. And it's not just about the finances. Yes, the money is there. But the truth is, we can truly make the world a better place. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I, I can just agree. Carol, what can we do concretely to educate people, to help them not only to consider this business opportunity, but the real and concrete change we can bring one more time for each one, everyone and everywhere? Yeah, it's very important um, to educate. I mean, you were talking about accessibility as well before, Laurent, and I was thinking about the Solana smartphone that was talked about last year, you know, because it was very difficult to access. You need a wallet. You have many wallets. It's not easy to get access. And I, I remember Solana was like working on it last year and they wanted to start democratization um, of access. And even with a smartphone that can go on Web3 very easily, that would be a big change. And you could also like imagine like a lot of educational um, features about that. And I know people who are, don't, are mobile first today. It's been many, many years now that the world is mobile first. So yeah, thinking in that 
direction of mobile first, either on Solana blockchain or maybe more mainstream blockchain like, like Ethereum, uh, would be a good start. Frédéric? Yeah, maybe a couple of things. A uh, question quite, quite tough. But uh, I think first is to avoid greed in the team itself. Because if you are running the project for a quick grab of money, that's what we, you will do. And maybe, uh, so change point of view uh, on, on this. And this leads to a change how you get money from investors. Because of course, where you got a VC, uh, you got this pressure. Okay, you can turn to uh, individual investors, but uh, depending on how you do things, you can have a horde of people in your Discord, just or your on your Telegram group, just asking you to pump the token. Okay, so try to find alternative way and uh, let's say a less aggressive um, uh, tokenomics and just um, target the long run and not a quick uh, quick grab. So this is how you get um, money for the investment and uh, yeah go on sorry yeah and and the last point is yeah, where does the value come from okay uh, we can we can do things for good okay there's so many things that are possible with web free okay uh, so we can take money from the last people who come in the project okay so this is ponzi and there is quite a lot of projects well done on that but we got many many other ways to uh, generate the value and to share value and we should at first uh, focus on okay uh, where the money come from do i selling something that people are happy to pay because uh, it's entertainment because it's a video game or maybe people will be happy to sponsor that because they will help my audience to learn something and it's their objective so it can be institutional or private sponsorship or maybe also uh, some other way to get value from data uh, and having your community uh, dealing with data and producing data set and then get value from that. So yeah, uh, where does the value come from? Just keep this question in mind uh, when starting a project and building uh, your strategy. I would like to, to come back to uh, uh, what uh, Carol said. You know, to attend to uh, in real life a crypto event, it's uh, really expensive. I will give you the example of uh, Paris Blockchain Week, that will uh, be in a few weeks. The minimum price it's approx one thousand euro. How can we talk about inclusivity? How can we talk about mass adoption? The Solana Fund, the same. Who can buy this such tool to? have a, a more uh, user-friendly onboarding process when it's uh, so expensive. And my main concern is, oh, we, we talk uh, openly about this issue because it's kind of schizophrenic speech. You know, we constantly talk about onboarding the next one million uh, users. And in the same time, we produce, uh, you know, a restrictive uh, and uh, exclusive uh, way to, to get access and for me, I, I still have no clear answer. I, I, we try uh, through uh, Web3 Stronger Together to, to, to bring something uh, different. We experiment. Have you any ideas, guys? How could we solve this uh, equation, escape this uh, sch schizophrenia? Shiel. I'm also tickled because I've had a similar conversation at a forum last week about affordability, right? I, I think some of us shake at that word. It, it, it's back to that digital elitism. Um, there, there is a problem. We live in a, a, a world where it is unbalanced, and it will always have the tears. We'll, we'll always have this, but the gap is widening, and we see it happening in real time as we speak. And so we we say affordability. I, I have students who are doing amazing work. Right. And right now we don't actually have a library at our college, one of the best historical black colleges and universities in the country. And over 70 percent of our students had a 3.0 average or higher. Right. We're, we're in the middle of we got our accreditation back. We lost over 40 acres of land. The president of our college is one of the top um, presidents of the university. But it was about getting it back. How does this correlate affordability? Right. We have affordable tuition. But the average student can't afford to make this type of purchase, but they're bright minds. So I think we have to look at it holistically. How do we level the playing field? 
I think it's a real conversation that a lot of people don't want to engage in because it's intentional. I think Web3 presents a platform and a, a rule of thinkers who want to have this conversation so that we can create pathways. It's going to take the finance industry. It's going to take technologists. It's going to take creators to really say, how do we do this? Is it subsidy? It isn't, is it really a ranking order? I mean, I think it makes some people uncomfortable because it brings us back to liberation. And that is a conversation that a lot of people don't want to have, but it is necessary. I, I, I mean, some people just can't afford it. And the irony is I think a lot of those who can't afford it are the ones who, if they had the opportunity, would do right with it. So it needs to be a plan, a strategic conversation. Yeah, and it shouldn't yeah. be left off the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm uh, one of the rare speaker on stage. I'm regularly uh, invited to, to attend to a crypto web free event as a speaker. And I often say, guys, we are just uh, doing a copy paste panel discussion from the previous uh, event. It's always the same face. We talk about uh, one more time inclusivity, diversity, but it's always the same people you meet because it's the cost is a, is a real barrier. And it's also how our industry, let's say, validates this, uh, this way of doing. I mean, accepting that I receive a few invitations uh, to talk uh, each week and uh, I say, why not? And then you receive a pitch deck with uh, the sponsor package. Okay. When I have decided with, with my team to organize this virtual summit, I say, we invite speaker. We invite, and when I invite someone at all to have a dinner, I don't give you the bill at the end of the dinner. You know, I invite you. So what does it mean? When it's paid speaking slots, you reduce the scope. You reduce the brainstorming scope, and you reproduce constantly the same uh, vision, the same talk. And I think it's also up to us to be uh, more proactive in this domain and saying, uh, guys, stop. It's like uh, greenwashing, you know, inclusivity and uh, equality, greenwashing, you know, it's the same for me. And the reason why I, I want to tell you again, uh, thank you for joining. It's for me, it's really important when I, I have a look to our website, the speaker page, and I, I see all these different people coming from all around the world. This is web free for me. And we should stop deifying some influencers, some well-known people, leaders, and trying to to be the same, I think it's, it's useless. It, I, I mean, in blockchain web free, because in the Satoshi Nakamoto white paper, there, there is just few words, peer to peer. And when I read peer to peer, I read one equal one. Yep. I put a piece of code between, and I'm sure that it is, that it will be one equal one. Yep. And for me, it's the main promise. Okay, there is a financial opportunity, there is a technical innovation, right? But I think, and when we have a look all around what we are all facing, all drama around, I think it's time also to, to, to try to bring and experiment new business model and more less oriented on the uh, token price or stock exchange price, but uh, more bring value not only for us, but for the next generation, not my daughter, but the child of my daughter. And it's personally what I want, what, what I want to bring. How can we uh, better spread this kind of uh, vision, guys? Have you any ideas? What, what should we all do together? What kind of action decision could we take? What can we do concretely to try to also bring and uh, spread uh, better spread this uh, this this vision. I'm curious to to have uh, your 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 thought on it. Carol, you have something maybe to share with us? Yeah, I want to like accessibility. I think it's a question of money, as you said, um, because events are really expensive. Um, but sometimes you can even have events that are free. Like I went to the Binance Blockchain Summit last year, and I, it wasn't free, but I got a, a free ticket. And then I was uh, in San Francisco at the NFT conference. Uh, last year as well in November, I was free, but the, and then I went to the Neo Tokyo because I'm a Neo Tokyo um, token holder, uh, NFT holder. 
And even when it's when it's free, people who come to those events are very much the same kind of people. So often like white young guys who want to make money and who already have money. So so f just for that, I just wanted to to say so that that it's not only like a, a barrier of like accessibility in terms of can I afford it, but also uh, am I interested in it? Do I understand it? There's someone in the comments that said said um, their teacher, the, the teachers of their daughter don't know anything about Web3 or crypto. To me, it's very complicated to understand the value, to understand Web3, crypto, uh, NFTs. Now we talk about AI and chat GPT that's really in front of the news and it's the new, the new thing and we can mix the two, crypto, uh, chat GPT, whatever, Bing. So just, yeah, I think it's a very big problem and... And I think, as I said at the beginning, it's mostly motivated by greed today. And we should, it would be like amazing to be able to, to get out of that and to really see like the potential of education, the potential for like new businesses, the fact that, of course, Web3 is horizontal and no one can decide for us. And it's, it's a very powerful uh, technology that's been slowly and slowly driven and, and built by the same kind of people that we see everywhere. Yeah, so I don't really have a solution right now. I just want to share my thoughts about about that. Yeah, but to think, thinking about it and the talking about it, it's already trying to yes. to improve. Uh, George, you you wanted to say something? Yeah, just really briefly. So, just a little bit of background. I used to be the world. I used to be the vice president for World Business Forum. We used to put big, big events like you're talking about, big budget events. We charge two thousand dollars per head, five thousand attendees. That's ten million dollars for a two day event. People can't afford that. The speaker selections were actually people that got paid a lot of money. You have to pay to play, like you said, right? But the key point is like, where I find the beauty of this, like I mentioned that I started in the internet. For example, the platform Eveland. Eveland brings the opportunity to have a big event anywhere you are, whether I'm in Merida, whether I'm in Florida, whether I'm in, in Argentina, where, wherever we are, we can bring the event to others. That I think is the big opportunity. And that's where I think we lie. We have the chance to be able to bring all of this to people who may not be able to get on a plane, who may not be able to get a hotel room. So huge opportunity for us to be able to just truly touch the entire world through these technologies. That's where I'm excited. Thank you, Joe. Guys, the reason why we plan to organize a, a summit, a virtual summit each uh, quarter with uh, Evland. Guys, the time is uh, running fast. For the next edition, we will have a longer panel discussion uh, because it's really exciting and I could stay with you. We still have a, a, a last keynote for today. I will give you uh, the mic for each one for last word. George, first. Well, first off, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here. And to any of the audience that actually wants to learn more about how to study about blockchain, Bitcoin, and crypto, I invite you to check out blockchaininstitute.com. And uh, we're actually offering a 10% off for anybody that uses code WEB3ST just to be able to give you the opportunity. If you want to participate in any of the online courses, please feel free. No obligation, just an invitation. Blockchaininstitute.com. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jean. Carol, the last word? Yes, well, thank you very much. I was very happy to be able to talk about that. It gave me like a lot of energy and, and new new ways of seeing like inclusivity. And um, I'm going to be looking forward to seeing you all of all of you uh, in other panels. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks to you, Frédéric. Oh uh, yeah, F thank you so much for this day. It was a pleasure uh, to hear the different panel and to discuss with, with you in this session. Maybe just, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not bullish on web free games, but I'm bullish on web free infrastructure. Uh, it's a new way to build things. So I think it goes well with uh, classic, let's say, game production. And then you can add a, a web free layer and have huge benefit for, for that. Uh, and uh, as we said, Game Five is about experimentation. Uh, so many projects will fail, and uh, I just wanted to uh, b say a big thanks to all the builders that keep building in the in the winter. Uh, spring will come, <laughs> and we will make great great thing uh, together. And, uh, and and yes, we had a play to earn, play and earn, and let's try to do some play to to save. That's, uh, that's, that's what we want to do. Yeah. Thank you, and Cheryl. The last, last world. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for first having me. Um, I Leap Group is here to serve our community, local and global at large. So I will say this, that we all have an opportunity um, to make impact. If you are a part of higher education or small, medium um, business enterprise, feel free to reach out to us via LinkedIn or our website. 
Um, what we always do is a health check. We start at the baseline to see the health of your business and your infrastructure and or your community. But we are committed to making sure that your business is a center of excellence to your community. So we were glad to be here and hoping that we continue to make impact. And I believe Web3 has a really, really commitment to making sure we are stronger together and that we stay um, connected. So thank you for having us and remembering that we have an opportunity to actually make change. Thank you. Thanks to you guys. It was a pleasure. And uh, as uh, Carol said, it's a lot of energy and inspiration. And I say it again, it's not a finality. This uh, first summit, it's, it's a beginning. It's a long journey. We have a lot to do. And I'm really glad to see that there is so many people ready to cooperate, uh, to collaborate and to try to bring an alternative and at least trying to do something and not uh, letting things uh, going on like it is. Thanks you again and see you soon. Let's keep building together. Bye bye. Thanks again to our guests and thank you everyone for listening. Thanks also to the Barian Music team for providing their music. You can check them out on barianmusic.com. All of the supporting information is on our website, blockchainrecorded.com. You can listen to us on Google, Apple, and Amazon podcasts, as well as on YouTube, Spotify, Radio Public, and Stitcher. You can follow us on Twitter and YouTube, where we are super grateful for your support. Stay tuned for our next episode.